Paul's in prison. It's so cold in that dungeon that he writes and says, would you please bring me my cloak, my overcoat? He, he's just going through a difficult time. He writes in this letter that he's been deserted, doesn't have any friends. Nobody showed up to be a witness for him when he was before the court. People are embarrassed. They're leaving him. They're not listening to the message and they've done him great harm. He really looks at the, the problems and he says, I can't believe how much they hurt me. Have you ever been there? Uh, it feels like a, a bit of a, an emotional prison. You can't believe you're there. And maybe there's a few close friends that you do have that somehow make it better. You just know that when you go through a hard time, they're going to be there for you as you've been there for them. That you're not going to let isolation get the best of you. And that's what the Apostle Paul does in this chapter as he writes to young Timothy. Now, I think it's wonderful that he invested in Timothy without having any idea the profit that it would bring back to his life as he invested in that young man and how rich it was and how powerful that Timothy would be one of those who would be there for him at the very last. There's a truth there that when we invest in others, they tend to invest in us and the rewards are far greater than we ever would have imagined. But there's a part of this chapter four of 2 Timothy that really stands out to me that I think is the secret of how the Apostle Paul handled this tough situation that we're going to talk about next Sunday in church. You see, in verse 13 of chapter four, he says, I want you to bring you the cloak that I left in Cyprus and also books and above all the parchments, the books scholars believe were the, probably the New Testament writings that were being developed into our modern day scriptures and that he was reading the rights of the, the works of Peter and Mark and Matthew and even Luke. Those are possibilities. But for sure we see that he says, and above all the parchments, he's on death row and he's asking for books and parchments. What is going on? He has a purpose that goes on beyond this life that makes the prison seem small in comparison to the parchments that will become God's word. The Holy Spirit is filling him with purpose to the very last, perhaps even up to the day of his death itself. People on death row don't have hope. They don't exhibit great possibilities of what God might do unless they know him. Well, that's what Paul does. He looks past the prison cell to the parchments to investing other people in other people. He has hope and he has purpose. Here's a question. Who are you investing in today? What, what do you think about God's words and its power to give us purpose? And is there a purpose in your life that goes so far beyond your current situation that it allows you to have a completely different attitude about what's happening? May it be so among us as it was for the Apostle Paul. I'm Pastor Tim, and this is our journey through 2 Timothy. We'll be looking at chapter 4 next week. God bless you.